Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be looking at the structure of the atom and a little bit about emission spectra and absorption spectra. So the first thing that you need to be aware of is that this is probably the most common picture that you'll ever see of an atom. Uh, it's not exactly the most accurate, but it'll do for our, you know, the purposes that we currently have in the class, okay? So in case you don't remember, we have our nucleus in the center. We have electrons orbiting that nucleus, and the nucleus is made up of two parts, protons, and then neutrons, represented by two different colors in this picture. So what are those particles that are found in there? And what do they do? Protons, neutrons, and electrons. Well, the first thing you need to be aware of are the protons, which we sometimes just abbreviate as a lowercase p, are positively charged. They weigh 1.007 atomic mass units. That's what U stands for. And they're found right in the center of the nucleus of your atom. What about neutrons? Neutrons have no charge, okay? They weigh a little bit more than protons, but are almost exactly the same. You can see they're almost the same. And they're also found in the center of the nucleus. What about these little guys, the electrons? So notice that the electrons in this picture are a lot smaller, but they would be significantly smaller. They're negatively charged. They only weigh about 0 0.00055 atomic mass units, and they're found orbiting the nucleus in what we call orbitals or sometimes clouds. Okay, so that's what this is kind of representing here. These are representing orbitals. Now, as you'll find out a little bit later on, uh, they don't actually form these nice little orbits, but for now, that's a good kind of solid picture that most people have in their heads when they think about atoms. So what do these particles do, right? What do protons do? What do neutrons do? What do electrons do? So protons, those designate which element are, is which, right? So if you have one proton, you are hydrogen. If you have two protons, you're helium. And that just kind of is the designation of what protons do. They change things from one element to another element. So if you were to all of a sudden, you know, have, you know, a helium atom with two protons, and for some reason you lost a proton, that means that would turn from helium into hydrogen immediately, okay? What exactly is that relationship like? Well, if you're looking at the periodic table, all you have to do is kind of look for your atomic number, and that's going to let you know what element you're looking at. So two protons would be helium, like I said. If you look up 26 on your periodic table, that would be iron. What do neutrons do? Well, neutrons give elements stability. So if you have, you know, a lot of neutrons, that's going to make you unstable. If you have too few neutrons, that's going to make you unstable. There's like a nice ratio that you want to have to make your atom kind of stick together and not break apart into smaller particles. And so again, the way that kind of works is you, um, you kind of can add or subtract neutrons from something and either make it radioactive or unstable or make it, you know, kind of stable and it's going to last forever conceivably. So for example, carbon with six neutrons is totally stable. That's the most common isotope of carbon you'll ever find. But if for some reason you decided to add two extra neutrons to it, that decays away. That's what we use when we're looking at carbon dating to figure out how old something is. Electrons, well, they balance out the charge of the protons. So protons are positive, remember? Electrons are negative. So they balance each other out. They also absorb and release energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. So they can release things that we talked about. You know, they can release some gamma rays, X rays, uh, UV, uh, visible light, stuff like that, microwaves, infrared, all that kind of stuff. So what exactly does energy absorption and emission of electrons look like? So if I were to say, okay, hey, let's shoot some energy at this, um, at this atom and let's see what happens to those electrons since they can absorb energy, here's something that you'll actually find and something that you'd be able to see. So here is what we call um, an emission spectra for hydrogen. So when you, you know, shine a bunch of UV light and other, you know, kind of energetic stuff at hydrogen, this is what you'll actually find. You'll find that hydrogen will absorb some of that, and then it will emit these wavelengths, which are like a fingerprint for hydrogen. So you've got this red line right here, so it releases this type of red color, this type of kind of light blue, this blue, and this uh, violet. And so those are the four kinds of things you'd see if you were looking at hydrogen. Now, what about absorption spectrum instead? So you can think of like, so if emission spectrum is what you, uh, what, that um, what that element or hydrogen in this case is emitting, absorption spectrum is everything else. 
uh, what don't you kind of see? And so you can see, notice that, hey, the sun has quite a bit of hydrogen in there. You can see kind of this line here. You can see this line um, here. You can see this line here and this line here. But notice there are these other lines. So what that tells us is the sun is not just made out of hydrogen. It has these other elements. And so if, you, if you're wondering and you're curious, you're like, hey, I wonder what else the sun's made up of. It's made up of a lot of helium. So a lot of these other lines that you see, um, that's going to be representative of helium or other elements that the sun's made up of. And in case you're wondering, again, how that kind of worked, that's how we discovered helium. When they looked at the absorption spectrum of the sun, they found, hey, there are these things that we don't really see. It must be an element. And so when they looked at their lines, they were like, okay, it's an element that we haven't really discovered yet. And so helios is what you know, sun is in Greek. And so that's where the word helium comes from. And the sun is made up of a bunch of hydrogen and helium. So first thing you need to be aware of, every element has its own unique emission spectrum. It's like a fingerprint. So what that means is that if you are like, you know, even looking at starlight from, you know, millions of light years or billions of light years away, um, if you have a clear enough view of it, you can tell what elements are in the stars or the atmospheres of planets as they pass over stars by looking at their emission spectrum. So if you've ever wondered, how do astronomers know, like, you know, what this planet is made out of or what um, this star has or what kind of star it is, they use emission spectra to figure a lot of that out. Also, electrons can only release energies of particular frequencies. That's why we see those lines. It's not a continuous thing. It's just these nice little lines. And so that is going to be representative of the colors that we see. Another little thing, orbitals that electrons travel in are not simple shapes, okay? They're not circles. In fact, this little picture, like I said, is not the most accurate, but it was fine for, you know, kind of what we wanted to use it for. But in reality, here are kind of what those electron orbitals look like. So the first one is a sphere, very similar, you know, to that model that you saw. But then the next kind of, you know, um, orbitals look crazy. They look like these little dumbbells. Then we've got like, you know, these four leaf clovers. We've got this weird little ring with two little things at the end of it. And so they get a lot more complicated, which is why, um, again, um, that first picture wasn't the most accurate, but it was definitely, you know, a good approximation.